salutations this is little nemo and i am going to be playing spaz space pirates and zombies and bounty hunters uh i i was just going to play this game anyways uh when i moved my games to the new computer i just didn't move the save files for this game over i decided to start a new game and um since I started a YouTube channel, I thought, well, I'm going to be playing this game anyways. Why not record it? I'll see how it goes. Um, it's a really good game. It's, it's definitely like 9.5 or 10 out of 10. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's, it's really fun. Uh... I will just turn tech availability up because I just don't want to deal with it. Turn total stars down. Actually, I've had problems if I turn the stars down with it being too much of a level jump in between the stars. So we will just um, start a game and uh, intro by narration by uh, Turtle Biscuit, who you probably have heard of and are likely watching now and instead of me. But that's okay. Um, so yeah, I'll just uh, be quiet. I like this now loading screen. It, some of them are funny. It's like preloading screams as you're stirring up trouble. Space is a vast and desolate frontier, covering a seemingly infinite distance. Even the speed of light is dwarfed by the unimaginable scale of our galaxy. It took nearly 250 years to bridge the void between Earth and its closest neighboring star. Mankind had mastered the folding of space-time, but relied on the use of warp gates. Massive drone ships journeyed through deep space for centuries, deploying pairs of warp gates which allowed instantaneous travel between connections. Warp gate travel had not become commonplace until the discovery of a stable element, number 126. This element contained bizarre transmutable properties, allowing it to be reconfigured into different forms of matter. This made it the most valuable and sought-after commodity in the universe. Mankind quickly became completely dependent on element 126, which the first miners named Rez. Due to the increasing demand for Rez, the Warpgate network became privatized. Anyone with ample funding was able to deploy new and unregistered Warpgates. Like a new gold rush, convoys of miners traversed the expanding Warp network looking for Rez deposits. This drove them closer and closer to the galactic core, where Rez deposits became richer and richer. The growing number of isolated colonies became unmanageable. As the unique ecologies of each discovered planet intermixed through trade, potential pandemics became a concern. The United Terran Alliance was formed to control interplanetary contamination. They moved to heavily restrict gate access. Military blockades began to screen all trade ships traveling between gates, attacking any unregistered ships that attempted to use them. For a time, the UTA was able to maintain control but they soon crumbled under the weight of rapid expansionism and bureaucracy. Unable to manage their fleets and borders, the military hierarchy collapsed. Without central leadership, the UTA fleets dissolved into a series of isolated subcells that rarely communicated or traveled beyond local space. Each military subcell now struggles to control their systems by whatever laws they see fit to implement. Despite the enforced isolation, rogues continue the gold rush while refugees amass hidden away from the UTA's eye. They survive within the vast junk fields of an abandoned Earth. There they build a massive flagship named the Clockwork. With it they intend to travel to the galactic core in search of a legendary mother load of rares. Okay, folks. It's that time again. This will be our seventh engine test this week. 
I don't want it. I don't want to go to bed with radiation burns again tonight. All right. Let's get these pup puppies fired up and good good and proper this time. Yes. Well, you see, we're lucky the toilet's even flush on this brick. I've managed to bootstrap the induction coil in the main core to boost output, but I don't expect it to maintain a viable reaction. Nuclear particle physics and duct tape do not mingle well, yes? Carl, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Just turn the bloody thing on. Damn, the magnetic stabilizer's blue. We have major breaches on deck 6 through 10. Our escort ships are gone and we're venting atmosphere. We have crew casualties. Oh, crewmen can always be replaced. The ship damage on the other hand. Well, I told you that piece of junk wouldn't hold back an overload. Do you honestly expect any different? Look at what I have to work with here. The blown stabilizer system will have to be replaced before we can even think of trying this again. It's a common part. I'm sure there is another one in the junk field somewhere. We still have a working hangar, so let's fire up the fabricator systems and build a ship to retrieve it. Poor crewmen and women being vented into space. Alright, we'll open up the hangar, and this is where we select ships. These are the tiny ones, obviously, the smallest ones we can build. And I'll just click Auto Rebuild, that way if we get destroyed, it'll try and build another one and gate in. Fetch quest! And or tutorial. Nearly everything of importance is marked with the radar, allowing you to see when it's off screen. Radar indicators will be pinned to the edge of the screen, showing you the direction and to and orientation of other ships. If you get confused as to what you should be doing, you can see your primary objectives in the ship, ship's log, F1. Just about every menu you see will have a help indicator. Click the help indicators to find out useful information about what you are looking at blah 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 tutorials but um chapter one is basically all tutorials and it's the game if you try and click the skip tutorial button it says it represents like an hour of gameplay and we can find schematics and stuff to make our ships more powerful so um i'm just gonna play through it plus it has story well that should fix the stabilizer but the overload compromised the structural integrity of the ship more than I initially thought. We can't jump with a breach like this. I've written up an extensive list of the repairs that will have to be satisfied before I'll conduct another test. Meanwhile, I'll be in my quarters. Let me know when you're done cleaning up your failure. Oh, you've got to be kidding. I really do hate that man. We're going to need to replace more than just one ship if we expect to cork that hole anytime soon. That's unfortunately easier said than done. The hull damage vented most of our res supply. We even lost all the damn liquor. We need to restock before we can build more ships. There's a mining station in the system. Elsa, you've worked with the miners before. See if you can convince them to let us harvest in their territory. And now we move about the system map, and uh, only one place to go. I contacted the mining base. They're all drunk on industrial paint stripper, so it wasn't too hard to convince them to let us harvest some res. We'll have to be very careful around here. The mining base is automated and won't think twice about slicing us in half with that mining beam. Let's siphon what we need and move it on. Mining base. 
your prospecting request has been granted. Please refrain from tampering with the automated mining system. If you happen to be exposed to the vacuum of space, please proceed to the nearest eyewash station and rinse thoroughly. Thank you, and have a pleasant day. That was not as robotic as I meant it to come out, but uh, I'm not really big with the voices, so excuse me. Uh, doing the best I can. This should be interesting. That asteroid they are drilling into is even more dense than you, Elsa. There is no way we can crack it. Only a station class core mining beam can even come close. We'll have to grab the spill off straps. I feel like such a transient. Maybe you should read this. I'm not going to read this out loud. If you would like to pause it, then fantastic. I'm just going to read this to myself. Alrighty. So we go pew 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 and um, grab these uh, as much as we can. We're full, so we go back and then we'll have to go back because we can only hold 10. Uh, if you see our, <coughs> in the upper left, the top number uh, just below the circle with our ship in it is the amount of res we can hold, and then under that is the amount of crew. Usually you don't take a huge amount of crew with you, you just take like a small fraction so you can pick up more people. But the higher crew that you have, the better ship repairs you can do. If you get damaged, it'll go faster. Um, And that's uh, good if you're in a fight. Alrighty. And now we deploy it, or drop it off at our beacon. I usually just let inertia carry me once I get close. I stop pressing the uh, accelerator forward and turn around so I can go back quicker. Now we have enough res to build the extra ship we're going to need. Plus, I was able to officially kick ass and salvage together another hangar. We should be able to support two ships now. That being the good news, here's the bad news. The explosion all but wiped out our construction database, and nobody backed up their hard drive. Luckily, I was able to recover the data for a single, small fighter ship called the Dart. I recommend we build a couple. Our current ships can't even cut butter, let alone stand up against any UTA ships. Well, finally some progress. Let's see to it that we collect what, sh sh what we need to build two darts. We're not leaving until we have some ships fit for combat. I sure hope you're paying attention. There will be a quiz after. Uh, this is one of the things I really like, is you can customize various parts uh, on your ship. You'll undoubtedly see a lot more of that later. But uh, we're basically stuck with the default gear for now, uh, until I can actually buy better stuff. I, I'm i going to build one of these, I'm going to collect a little more res, and I'll click auto build, and then I, I don't even have to click build ship, it'll automatically start building. Um, I'll probably end up cutting out a few minutes here of me collecting res. Okay, I only made a few trips uh, to and from. I, I think I now have 
like 60 res. Um, so, oh, 40. I, I must have spent some, obviously, to uh, refit. Well, there we go. Our fleet is slightly less pathetic now. We've got what we need. Now let's get the hell out of here. So, y'all wanna pick my stones and run off, eh? Well, you go right ahead there, missy. But not without hearing me out first, or Y'all help us kick those UTA boys in the jimmy, and me and my boys will fix up that big ol' ship you got floating around. What say ye? I suppose we can trust these people, provided you don't have any money in your pockets. I'm not sure we really have much of a choice. We're weeks away from repairing the clockwork without their help. We have a small and capable fleet now. Why not put it to some use? I sure hope you're paying attention. There will be a quiz after. I prefer the ship with lasers, and then I have one with the cannons. Uh, this, because they're harder to aim. I just let the AI take care of that. Maybe you should read this. can't afford those because it costs a lot. Okay, well, I'll get some money soon. A minor problem. <laughs> All right, these is uh, I need to do a few <coughs> quests in a row that basically are just kill a bunch of ships. Well, I mean, that's basically what a lot of uh, of the quests boil down to. Ah, Fortune Smiles. We're lucky there are no UTA, UTA ships right here. Here, right now. They are probably off robbing some other mining patrol. These fringe worlds are unmonitored, so the bastard ju bastards just do as they damn well please. Let's loot the hell out of this place quickly before they come back. We need to keep an eye on what we're blasting too. Max sent us some backup, so don't be shooting the green ships. The tactical systems have been repaired and are coming online now. We need to fire up the system to make sure there aren't any crossed wires. Alrighty then. Uh, these are data, the little orbs. Uh, that's basically our XP. Uh, the rocks are obviously res, which you heard about in the uh, cutscenes. And uh, data is, you know, we'll level up when we get enough data. Now I can start upgrading some of our ship systems. We don't have a lot of data, but we have enough to get a few critical systems up to par. We'll have to choose which upgrades we think are most important. We should take care of this right away to get a leg up against our enemies. Okay, research screen. Excellent. I sure hope you're paying attention. Level one there is for the overload after. emitter. Uh, let me see the reactor. 
we'll want to upgrade that soon, but, um, do I just want to do this? Mm -hmm. No, I'll save that point. Dump off our cargo. Oh, this thing can only hold two res. Phew, okay, we just have to destroy these, gather the stuff. And, uh, obviously I played this before, but also I played this several times recently to try and test out the whole microphone thing, which I haven't worked out yet still, so uh, sorry about the white noise fuzz that you probably hear. I'm just going to let you read this through getting a bit sore trying to do his voice. Red shirts. Oh. Uh, and actually, there's later some weapons that drain enemy uh, power so they can't really fire lasers and stuff or any uh, weapons that rely on having energy and now we just need to slog it out with the UTA ships while not hitting our friendly ships here Or at least not hitting them too much. There's a small amount of forgiveness that is allowed. Uh, that is a uh, crewman. Hey man, please don't kill me man. I was just following orders. I really don't even know why we're, I'm out here. That picture is priceless. Well, I'm not going to kill you yet. Drones are expensive, and the toilets are in need of a scrubbing. Perhaps you can take a look at that crack in the reactor for me. Hell, you're going to eat a turd sand- you're going to eat turd sandwiches without the bread if I tell you to. You even look at me the wrong way, I'll toss your ass out in airlock. That might have been a bit harsh. As awesome as I am at fixing your tin traps, I could really use the extra crew working repairs, but we should put anyone who is willing to use. The clockwork can also hold quite a few extra goons if we need to keep manpower in reserve. reserve. We don't really need to space everyone we come across. I do agree with you somewhat. Let us not forget that these goons might be valuable if we pawn them off as workers. I'm sure there are many stations that are wor willing to pay for the extra manpower. I sure hope you're paying attention. There will be a quiz after. Um, and as I was saying, you you can choose how much crew you bring with you uh, by percentage of the max that a ship can hold. And there's also places where you can uh, trade goons for data or res and there's of course places where you can trade res for goons and as you can see here we 
are the pirates in the space pirates and zombies. is annoying to try and attack ships among other NPC friendly ships. Um, I cannot friendly fire my own ships, but I can friendly fire uh, allied ships like these civilian ships. Um, not much really to say at this point. Um, I generally prefer ships that have turrets, that way I don't have to always be facing. And it's easier to maneuver around other ships. Well, you don't want to be near ships that are exploding. Uh, because the explosion will uh, blow off your shields or kill you even like if you're near a space station when you kill it or even some of the bigger ships uh, Sore Throat, gonna let you um, read this data I will oops no oh yeah this better missiles and we'll take the better shields we need to upgrade this twice and then we have no more all right let's go back here and they will sell us stuff now and uh, it would be nice to get some uh, upgraded lasers. And shields. So lasers first, cost 55. Oh, we won't be able to use these uh, even if I buy them because I need level 2 reactor and level 2 engines to use them, but we can buy them. Uh, I just don't have the res to do it. So I'm going to buy the shields here. And um, now I will refit our ships with the better shields. This one I'll give the better lasers to as well. Refit that now. Uh, not enough resources. Okay, so I, you know, we'll cancel this refit. Um, but you'll see what I just did. I'm going to stop recording here. I don't know how long this has been. Um. Like I've said several times, my throat's a little, getting a little sore from doing the voices. So, um, thank you for watching.
Uh, I'm just going to uh, gather a little bit of res, maybe buy those extra things, and uh, refit our ships. That's all rather boring. Alright, it's been a few minutes, I got a little bit of res, and uh, we'll buy the reactor, and uh, the speed, the engines, I mean. Okay, I made both of the ships with these uh, small overload emitters, and the better shields. Just uh, wanted to add this into this video. Um, so yeah, again, have a good day, and uh, thank you for watching.